Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Mark on the World Show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe, and our guest today is Andrew Jacob, who is the CEO and founder of Rayton Solar, and he's got a next-generation solar technology that has the potential to dramatically reduce the cost of producing solar panels. This is a big deal. I'm very excited. Uh, just proof positive about the uh, progress we're making toward a fossil fuel free world and the uh, entrepreneurs that are making that happen. So stay with us. The Your Mark on the World show is made possible by our sponsors, including Clean Energy Advisors. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another change maker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Andrew, welcome to the show. We're so excited to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be uh, great. Now, tell us what you're, about your fundamental technological leap forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from a very high level, from a fundamental standpoint, right, uh, the way that solar panels have been conven conventionally made and still are to this day uh, was a method developed not for solar panels but for uh, semiconductors very small piece of silicon that you have in your smartphone, right? So you're not concerned with the amount of waste that is used to produce that small piece of silicon because you could sell it for like $700, right? Um, now, solar is a fundamentally different application. You're covering millions of square acres of land in silicon, right? So the method of harnessing that silicon uh, needs to be different. And what we have done is we've developed a way to utilize 100 times more silicon uh, per, per uh, raw material for solar. A hundred times more. I mean, that's that's two orders of magnitude leap forward in wow. utilization of uh, silicon. That's really amazing. Now, you came up with this on your own. Tell us a little bit about how that uh, how you came up with this idea. Well, so I, I started out in solar in 2009. I started a solar installation company, and I was doing commercial rooftop installations in Los Angeles, uh, and participated in the federal grant program that was available. Um, so that program was ending in 2012. And it's how we were able to do so many installations. Um, so I, at that time, I was thinking, started thinking about how can we reduce the cost of solar just about 30% uh, so that we don't need government grants anymore, right? And then that's when I started looking into solar manufacturing and then realized, wow, there's this great way to get a lot more silicon for a solar panel. Uh, and it happens to use something that I'm quite familiar with, which is a particle accelerator. Uh, my background is in physics, in, in accelerator technology. Well, it's fascinating because most of us uh, don't have a particle accelerator in the home. Uh, right. Well, so what, uh, the heck, what the heck is a particle accelerator? Well, you know, you wouldn't realize, you know, when you think of particle accelerator, you think of, you know, what's in CERN, those big 22 kilometer accelerators. But to correct you, you actually did at one point have a particle accelerator in your home, and most people did. Um, CRT monitors, right? Those are actually particle accelerators. They accelerate electrons to the screen. So every old TV before um, flat panels came out was an accelerator. Wow, it's, I, I had no idea I was so cool back then. Right. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Well, so uh, Rayton Solar is really at a startup stage. You have not started producing uh, at a commercial scale, correct? That's right. That's right. We've been in an R&D mode for the past couple of years. Uh, we've proven out the technology, um, proven out that it works each step of the process in the laboratory setting. Uh, and now we are um, purchasing machinery to open a pilot manufacturing line in 2018. So and uh, you've raised six and a half million dollars uh, successfully. Who were some of the investors that participated? Uh, well, we did our first seed round uh, with accredited investors. That was a two point eight million dollar seed round. Uh, we, we did what was called Regulation D, so anybody that was an accredited investor could, could find our, our profile online and invest, right? And we, we had a minimum investment of $20,000. Uh, but we had two large investors. One of them, um, each of them put about a million dollars in. Um, and so one of them is a manufacturer. They make um, commercial-grade uh, coffee machines for, for restaurants. So that they know the manufacturing industry, and they saw this as like a next-generation um, you know, way to harness energy. It's, it's the future of manufacturing. It's the future of energy. Very cool. And now you're in the process of raising additional capital using Regulation A+, 
uh, yeah. Start Engine is helping you out with that race. Tell us a little bit about what the uh, about this offering. Yeah. So previously, only accredited investors were allowed to invest in a very early stage company. Uh, that was a regulation, um, U.S. government regulation, but that changed in 2000 and, uh, 2012 by the Jobs Act, right? So as of 2015, if a company were to go through a certain registration process with the SEC, um, they can open up the investment to anybody, right? And so we, we went through that process last year, and we were just approved earlier this year. Uh, and so now people, anybody out there that likes our technology, that sees it as, you know, a really future um, idea, can invest online. This uh, is a pretty exciting development because for so many years, ordinary investors were prohibited from participating in right. early stage company offerings because most right. were done, uh, uh, like your last one, uh, to only accredited investors. Right. So this is, this is a big deal. Um, how much have you raised so far on, on this race? So from this round that we opened in February of this year, we've raised about 3.7 million. And how much are you hoping to raise? Uh, the goal is to get to 7 million, right? And that, that allows us to build out the pilot line. Um, but we are also able to raise up to 50 million. So we've been qualified by the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, to raise up to $50 million this year. So obviously if you got more, it would give you a little more runway and a, an opportunity to scale a little further in the, with this round of capital. Very exciting. So uh, tell us a little bit about the deal terms. Uh, what, what can you tell us? Well, I could say that it's $1.52 per share. That's the share price to the public uh, that was qualified in this offering. Uh, and you're getting in at, at a stage that's early, early in the company. Um, you know, we're pre-production, we're pre-revenue. So there's a lot of room for growth. Excellent. And, Excellent. You know, we see it as a way to empower, empower the common person uh, to get in, in into an early stage company and, and really invest in a company they believe it, but uh, not just you know donate money to the company. You are getting a piece of the company. You're along for the ride. Yeah, very very interesting in that regard. Now uh, you got uh, Bill Nye yeah. uh, to do a little promotional video for you. He does a great job. Yeah. Uh, how did you connect with Bill Nye? Uh, it was you know just a matter of reaching out. Um, you know I was able to call him. The, the idea uh, behind it was that we have a very complicated scientific process that we have to explain to anybody. Um, so who's really good at doing that? Well, Bill Nye is, he, he's been doing that his, his whole life. Uh, he's probably the best person in the world that can explain really complicated science uh, to the masses. Uh, so that's why we went, reached out to him and, uh, you know, he just, he came and he vetted our technology, um, and then spent the day with us to, you know, just see our operation. And then he signed on to, to be our, uh, there's also a connection between Rayton and uh, UCLA. Tell us a little bit about the connection there. Uh, so I used to work at UCLA, and that's where I was working in a particle beam physics laboratory uh, run by James Rosenzweig, who's a professor at UCLA in physics. Um, so I was working there, and I was actually engineering um, electron accelerators, right? Uh, what's called a high brightness electron beam. Um, that's what I was doing at the time when I had this idea. Uh, but I was also doing the solar installation company. So I had both. And so when I first came up with the idea, I reached out to James Rosenzweig and, um, you know, brought him the patent that I had written. Um, and then, you know, he, he looked at it and was, you know, interested by it enough to join us uh, and become our first uh, board member. You know, very exciting. So this round is looking pretty good. You said you expect to build out the uh, production facility in 2018. When do you think you'll start producing solar panels using this new technology? Yeah, we, we'll be able to make material as soon as we have our machinery delivered uh, next year, right? So the main component is a particle accelerator and we have ordered one. It's being built right now and expected to be delivered January, 2018. And you know, we'll have a, a few months of a ramp up time, but. Um, essentially, we'd be able to start making silicon cells as soon as we turn it on. Wow, that would be great. So, uh, what does this uh, particle accelerator look like? Uh, would it fit inside my CRT monitor? It would not. It definitely would not. Um, think of something the size of like an MRI machine, right? Okay. It's about that size. Uh, the machine costs two point four million, and we were able to raise those funds to pay for this machine from the crowd, uh, which I think is is kind of amazing. Um, you know, thanks to the support from everybody that invested. 
Yeah. It's going to be delivered to us in Santa Monica, and we're going to have that up and running, you know, mid-2018. Um, Are you going to be able to scale production here in the United States, or will you end up uh, doing a production scale facility in China or somewhere else in the developing world? We would really like to keep it here in the U.S., right? So with this ion implant technology, it actually, the process happens inside of a vacuum. So inside of a vacuum, you need robotics. And so since we're using robotics, it doesn't actually make sense for us to outsource it because there's no manual labor. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, humans don't do well in a vacuum. No, we, we don't. We don't. And we don't want to put anybody in that vacuum. And no one likes to crawl around in an MRI. So uh, I, think, I think it's wise. Well, this is very exciting stuff, very exciting stuff. And clearly, you are a, a big deal. Uh, and a lot of people look up to you as a role model. But who do you look up to? As a role model. Well, I, I look. I have. I have a favorite scientist, and his name is Richard Feynman, right? If you if you read his books, they're just they're entertaining, but like really really thoughtful. He was one of the uh, the scientists in his early twenties. He worked on the Manhattan Project, uh, Nobel Prize winner. But but he writes some really great autobiography books that are like comical, uh, but insightful. So he's a great guy. I look up to Elon Musk, right? He's he's the at the he, in our generation. He's he's the forefront of uh, renewable energy right now. So uh, I really admire the things that they're doing over at Tesla. Yeah, well, I imagine you're hoping to get his attention because he would, uh, he, you know, Solar City, Tesla would be a pretty good customer. We believe so. <laughs> yeah, that's that's terrific. Now, uh, you could really be doing anything. Uh, why does this hold your attention so well? Well, we see it as the, the future energy source, right? With the existing technology, the old technology uh, that was created to make semiconductors, uh, we have already you know, brought solar to a very um, big market penetration, right, in renewable energy. Um, but we're still like a fifth of the way there. So if you look at California, for example, right, solar makes up you know, 15 to 20% of the, of the state's energy. Uh, but it's just been mandated that we want to get renewables, that, that includes wind, right, wind and solar, to 100% of the state's energy, right? Um, and the world, uh, the International Energy Agency predicts that uh, by the year 2050, the world will get 50% of its energy from renewables. And um, right now it's less than 1%. Yeah. There's just huge growth uh, to be had in, in the solar sector. Yeah. Uh, yes. It seems like we're on the cusp of an explosion. Uh, and what we've seen is just the, the very beginning. Yeah, um, and, and you know, in the developing world, so I, I believe that Africa is going to have a revolution, like um, kind of how South Asia had, had a you know, technological revolution in places like Tokyo and, and South Korea, right? You went from a developing world economy to a very uh, sophisticated first world economy in a matter of 30 years or so. Uh, and I see that happening in Africa uh, and India, it's already happening in India, but it, and it's just starting to happen in Africa. Uh, but the driving force, and, and really the, the the driving force behind this would be renewable energy, their their adoption of it, because those places don't yet have infrastructure, so they get to start from scratch and build an infrastructure system that's already renewable and does not emit uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, um, and also has a marginal cost approaching zero. Uh, which is an exciting thing in a world full of uh, people who are struggling economically. So. Yeah, and, and you know, one other key advantage is that um, in countries where there's not a lot of, inf where there's no infrastructure, there's no power grid, right? It costs actually a million dollars a mile to build the power grid. And you know, in developing countries, it was all done by, it was led by the government. So those governments don't have money to build power grids. Uh, so if you deploy things like off-grid solar uh, in these areas, you can have energy over there without the need for a grid. Oh, fantastic. Well, Andrew, what is your superpower? <laughs> My superpower. Okay. Um, I guess this, this will be kind of like a little tip for, for other entrepreneurs out there um, is a, just be resilient, right? I, I think uh, I've been pretty resilient and been able to get through a lot of problems that a lot of people would have given up on. Or, I, you know, I even thought about giving up on it. Uh, but you just stick through it and just kind of like, look at the problems from 30,000 feet and then you'll start seeing solutions uh, to those problems and finding out what those solutions are. 
Yeah, fantastic. Well, it's a great superpower. I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today, Andrew. Before you go, tell people how they can learn more about Rayton Solar, how they can invest, and how they can connect with you personally. Okay, yeah. Um, if we have a website. It's raytonsolar.com. If you go there, there's a button that says invest. And if you click on that, it will tell you everything you need to know about how to invest in Rayton Solar. Uh, there's also a button for our offering circular, which is the um, – the forms that were filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So if you just go to our website, you'll see both those buttons and get all the information you need. Um, if you want to reach out to us, uh, our number, our phone number is on, on the website, so you can call us and, you know, between the hours of 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, somebody is there to answer your call. Um, I'm also available. If you want to reach out to me personally, uh, I've set up an email for people that want to invest, and I check it every week. Uh, it's Andy, A-N-D-Y, at RaytonSolar.com. So if you want to reach out to me personally through email, that's the email address. Fantastic. Well, uh, Andrew, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and wish you every success in your uh, capital raise and in the great work you're doing to make solar even more affordable. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right. Let's do some. Clean Energy Advisors creates investment opportunities in the renewable energy sector that provide clients with a predictable income, preservation of capital, and positive impact. Clean Energy Advisors is committed to providing clients with investment opportunities with both market rates of return and measurable impact. Thank you for listening. This podcast was recorded via Google Hangouts on Air and is available at youtube.com forward slash Devonthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devon hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur or other changemaker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devin is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com. Learn more about Devin's work at yourmarkontheworld.com.